Hello, welcome all. Welcome in another important video. And in this video, we will try to implement our earlier learnings and we will create online auction platform. So in any online auction platform, there will be some assets on a sale and those assets could be your digital assets or it could be the physical assets. The people who are interested in buying it, they will put bids on that asset and whoever is the highest bidder at the end of the auction will get that deal done so here is a diagrammatic representation of how online auction will look like so let's say this watch is on sale and bidder a put hundred dollars bidder b put hundred and fifty dollars bidder c put fifty dollars and bidder d put four hundred dollars so at the end of the auction this is the status of the bidding so as you can see here, the bidder D put uh, highest bid, so he will get that deal. So in order to create a smart contract for this particular use case, we will need to choose our variables. So now in Solidity, there is mapping and with that we can store key value pairs. As you can see in the remix, we have multiple addresses. So this will be our key and then the value that we will try to put from here will be the value that we will store in that mapping so now let's create new file here i'm giving it a name auction.sol and in this file we'll need to declare version of solidity so we are okay with any solidity version which is greater than 0.4.0 .0 and it should be lesser than 0.9.0 if i save this here we got a warning and this is because it is asking us to declare SPDX license which is open source license. We'll simply go back in any default contract, we'll copy it and we'll paste this line as our first line. So as you can see error has gone. Now we will need to write our smart contract. So let's write contract and our contract name will be auction. Let's open and close curly braces. Alright, so now here we need to declare our mapping. So as you can see, we have address A, which will put $100. In the same way, there will be other bidders. Let's say bidder B will put $150. So this is nothing but the key value pair data type. That is the reason why we are using mapping. So as you can see here, we have to write mapping. And inside of it, we will need to declare key value key type which is address in our case and since the value that we are going to insert will be in unsigned integer itself so we'll not change anything it's just that we have to change the name of this variable so let's say bidders data all right now we need three things initially first of all we will need one function through which any address through which user can put bid uh, for the particular item and we will need one more function which will give us highest bid amount and in the same way we will need another function which will give highest bidder details well this is our first goal now now let's start declaring our first function which is put bid now with this function user will be able to put new bid so now this function will be public because we want to give users access and we need to make this function as a payable now the reason why we are making this function as a payable because we want to receive amount inside of our smart contract so now there will be two cases first case will be let's say c is our contract and a1 a2 and a3 is the addresses of wallet so now we want to receive ethereums inside of our smart contract address a can put ethereums inside smart contract in the same way address 3 can also put ethereums in our smart contract so we will need to make our function as a payable to receive ethereums inside of the smart contract address all right and that's pretty much it and just to verify that we received and ethereums we will write one function let's say get contract balance all right and this is just for testing purpose okay 
and we'll need to change this function name so let's say get contract balance all right so now we don't need to make this function payable and this will be public and view function itself and we will return unsigned integer from this function okay so now to fetch our contract balance let's go back in documentation and we already saw what is global variables so you can search that global variables in this list so here is cheat sheet so i want contract balance so we can receive that from okay so we can receive this by with this way right so we need to use address and this is and this is basically pointing to current contract so with this way we'll be able to receive smart contract balance okay let's our code is already compiled so let me deploy it and see if we can get that value so our code is deployed let me open it now we have two functions one is put bid another is get contract balance so currently contract balance is zero and if i try to put bid uh, it is still giving me zero now we will see how to add that ethereums inside of our smart contract so i choose another account which has 100 ethereums just for the sake of simplicity i'll choose value one and unit as a ether okay and i'll simply call this function which is put bit now if i check current contract balance now we received one ethereum and if you can see one ethereum got deducted from this account right let's try one more time now i want to send four ethereum so i'll put that here so now total amount of ethers that we have sent is five and if i click on get contact balance we received five ethereum so with this way any address can place new bid right and we will receive that ethereums inside of a smart contract now let's try to verify few conditions right some of the conditions will be let's say someone is trying to pay zero ethereum we simply want to restrict that operation so so we are going to use a require which is another way of handling errors in solidity so now the amount that we are receiving that we will receive in message dot value variable and it should be lesser than if it is lesser than zero then we will will say bid cannot be zero if the condition is valid if the bid amount is greater than zero then we will simply update that in our map variables so with this way we have to write bid is data and inside of it we will simply use users we'll simply use address as a key and we will update that value here now the get contract balance function was just for our reference so i'll change it with a different name instead of returning contract balance i want to return balance of any particular user so in that case let's rename this function by get bidders bid and return this value right from our mapping okay so now we'll need to pass address as a parameter for this function let's say variable name will be underscore address and we will use this address as a key okay so all said we're pretty much done here and return value will also be unsigned integer so we don't need to change anything here well we received an error this is because we forgot to write semicolon after this line let's save this Okay, so still we are receiving this saying address is not visible okay it's my bad it should be message dot sender so in message dot sender we receive address of the person who called this function right 
Now let's deploy our contract. Let's select any account which has 100 Ethereum. Let's copy its address and I'll pass this address as a parameter for this function. Now if I call this function, as you can see, the bid amount that this particular person placed is zero at this moment, which is fair enough. Now I will try to put two Ethereum as a bid amount. Let me call this function. If you can see here, we received message saying bid amount cannot be zero. Uh, well, this is because we messed here. Our condition is wrong. Our message value should not be, should be greater than zero, right? So let's follow the same process. Copy address of account which has 100 Ethereum. And if you can see here, currently bid address is zero. Okay, now I will try to call this put bid function uh, with zero Ethereum. So here we are receiving this error message, which is, that means our conditions are working fine. So now I will try to put two Ethereum in the smart contract. So we able to, we able to pass two Ethereum in our smart contract. All right, but here we are missing one condition. Let's say person A put $100 at the first time. Later on, he changed his mind and decided to put 20 more dollars. So his total amount will be $120. We also need to take care of that as well. So let's say if I put one more Ethereum and try to call this put bid function. Now here total amount invested by this particular address will be three Ethereum. But if we can see here, we received one Ethereum. Now this is because we did not handle this situation okay so now the first thing that we will do here is we will declare one variable which will be local variable and we already discussed if we declare multiple if we declare local variables we don't have to pay any gas fees so we are safer on that side so i'll simply put one variable and value that we have received we have to sum the value that we have received with the value that already existing and mapped with this particular address all right so now here we will get calculated amount which we need to update inside of this mapping value let's save this and delete our existing deployed contract let's deploy this one more time and let me select another account copy its address paste it here so at the moment amount is zero let's increase the value let's say one ethereum put this bid so here we have one ethereum now user decided to put three more ethereums so now as you can see we got this correct now at this time we got this correct so now we able to handle this situation as well. So now we will need to declare two more functions which will return highest bid amount and highest bidder name, highest bidder address respectively. So let's declare one unsigned integer with name highest bid amount and let's declare one address variable highest bidder okay so now we will need to add few conditions in this put bid function and now the conditions will be let's make a copy of this and here we will check if the highest bid is present then we will simply reject this request and if the amount that we are receiving is greater than the already existing highest bid allow this request to proceed so the calculated amount should be greater than the highest bid amount then and then only we will allow this request to complete so we will need to update this variable value as well so let's say has bidder is equal to message dot sender and let's also make change in this message okay so if calculated amount is greater than the highest bid amount then we will say highest bid is highest bid is already present okay so now that we have all the variables ready 
we can simply return that by creating new functions so let's say highest bid function will return the name of the amount of highest bid its value is return type type is public and we will simply return this variable although in any online auction platform we don't require such information all the values will remain hidden from the users this is just for our convenience all right so now we have to update the highest bid amount as well so let's update that okay so now we will update so simply i will simply return highest bid amount let's make a copy of this function we just need to change the name of this function with highest bidder and return time will be address make sure that your function name should not be equal to the variable name right so let's make h as a capital so we'll return highest bidder so we received one error saying returns is saying unexpected primary expression now this is because it shouldn't be returns it should be just return right we made mistake here let's save this now this time we received some warnings and it is saying restrict your function as a view okay so okay so now our contract is compiled successfully let's delete our deployed contract deployed one more time and now we have four functions so highest bid is zero at this moment highest bidder is also zero all right so let's choose account which has 100 ethereums let's try to get highest bidder value let's call it so yeah there is zero bid from this user now we will put let's say he wants to put four ethereums as a bid so let's put this bid so if we can see highest bid now it is four and highest bidder value is the account which has a b a b right at the end so if i see here a b a b account has 95 ethereums that means four ethereums got deducted from his account now select any other account which has 100 ethereums and now we will create a situation where there will be will be multiple bidders now he wants to add two ethereum as a bid price so if i click on this put bid you can see here we received and error message saying highest bid already present so our existing highest bid is for ethereum but any user any user try to put bid lesser than the for ethereum will simply reject his bid right so now user 2 decided to put more than two ethereums okay so his bid is his function is executed and now the highest bid is five and highest bidder is also changed so now this is an account with one f f7 at the end all right so now let's try to choose our first user and our first user decided to put some more ethereums as a bid so he already paid four ethereums so now he is ready to put three more ethereums let's call this function now the total amount of ether paid by him is seven as you can see we got this highest bid as seven and highest bidder is also our first user now so everything is working completely fine now so we have basic implementation of our online auction ready so now this is the time to introduce timer in our auction